Now, the United Nations says China's treatment of Uyghurs and other Muslim minority groups may constitute crimes against humanity. In a long delayed report, the UN's Human Rights Office said there was credible evidence of torture, forced medical treatment, and sexual violence in detention camps in the northwestern Xinjiang region, which Beijing uh, describes as training centers. Uh, China opposed the release of the report and has denied the accusations. The 220-acre Urumqi No. 3 detention center is the largest in Xinjiang and in China. It's at facilities like this one where Beijing has long been accused of detaining more than one million Uyghurs and other Muslim minorities. Now, a bombshell UN Human Rights Office report says the detentions, which it called arbitrary and discriminatory, may amount to crimes against humanity. It also said it found, quote, credible allegations of torture, rape, forced sterilization and forced labor. The long-anticipated report was released just 13 minutes before Michelle Bachelet's term as UN High Commissioner for Human Rights ended and followed months of pressure from China to block its publication. This report is a hodgepodge of misinformation that serves as a political tool for the U.S. and the West to strategically use Xinjiang to contain China. The Chinese government has long maintained that many of its facilities in Xinjiang are vocational training centers, created to counter alleged extremism and separatism among the region's Muslim majority. But pictures from facilities in Xinjiang that were leaked earlier this year tell a very different story, with hooded and bound prisoners forced into stress positions, surrounded by police officers armed with clubs. The UN report urges China to release detainees and explain the fate of the huge numbers of people who have simply disappeared. But with Beijing denying having even committed any abuses, many observers are doubtful it will change its policies in Xinjiang. Well, until yesterday, Kenneth Ross was the, Roth was the executive director of Human Rights Watch. He's now retired after leading the human rights organization for nearly uh, 30 years and joins us uh, from New York. Uh, welcome back to DW, Mr. Roth. Um, is this report, uh, as China says, a, a hodgepodge of misinformation? To the contrary, this is a powerful, damning report. Now, we know that Beijing has you know, been obstructing and denying and trying to prevent the publication of this report for a long, long time. But this is a very detailed report based on you know, multiple interviews with former detainees and others with firsthand information. And it describes the horror facing the Uyghur and other Turkic Muslims of Xinjiang. There is so much to tell in that, that you know, it just basically gives the lie to Beijing's repeated denials. Um, no one can read that report and believe these denials anymore coming from the Chinese government. OK, so let's say the report is read and believed. What does it change? Well, I think that Beijing was desperate to prevent its publication because it didn't want this official refutation of its lies. But this is obviously just step one. You know, unfortunately, I mean, as you noted, Michelle Bachelet, the, the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights, you know, published this report really on her last, in her last minutes in office. And so she's not gonna be in a position to follow through. Her successor is not yet named, so her deputy will temporarily take over. So it really, at this stage, I think the ball is in the court of the United Nations Human Rights Council. This is the governmental body based in Geneva, which is the UN's highest you know, human rights body. And the report, in essence, calls to the Human Rights Council to act. The Human Rights Council has never, ever condemned China. You know, China's just been deemed too powerful. But now that we see probable crimes against humanity documented in an official UN report, it really is incumbent upon the Human Rights Council to act. There are 47 governments that already have condemned what's happening in Xinjiang. I hope that this report will lead to larger numbers and finally a critical mass, a majority on the Human Rights Council, that will permit the kind of investigation and condemnation 
that Beijing is terrified of, right. and Listen, I think gives us the force it to change. You, you, you've mentioned the pressure that, that, that Beijing ha has exerted to try and, um, and suppress uh, this report. We've, we've touched on the timing that it, it, was, it was released on uh, within hours of Michelle uh, Bachelet's uh, leaving. Uh, has she, in fact, yes. nobbled this report? Is, it, it has, has it, in, in fact, it, it, it does look like China's work has been done if, as you say, it ends up falling between the cracks of the, the commissioner who leaves uh, and a, a new permanent commissioner being appointed? Well, I think the delay in releasing the report you know, had multiple causes. The high commissioner could have released this report earlier. Um, she was sort of forced into traveling to Beijing. She had been seeking an unfettered investigation. Um, China had offered and said, you can come for a friendly visit instead, a nice chit chat. And UN Secretary General Antonio Guterres undercut his high commissioner by agreeing that she should go for a visit. And so she was stuck with this visit, which really accomplished nothing. Um, then China deluged her with efforts to refute the facts about what's happening in Xinjiang. So she had to deal with all that information. That said, it still is a powerful report. Um, and I hope that the UN Secretary General, who has remained agnostic on Beijing's crimes, has tried to avoid commenting, now that his high commissioner is gone and there's this void in Geneva, I hope he will step up, say something, and then the Human Rights Council will pick up the mantle and, and really push forward for an investigation and a condemnation. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We wish you well in your retirement, Kenneth Roth, former Executive Director of Human Rights Watch.